Today's video is brought to you by a broken tripod and a microphone with a little foamy thing continuing to come off. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see the about the quality of this video. If I suddenly look like I'm collapsing, it's just the tripod. Hi Booktube, it's Kim at K Backers Books, and today's video is an indie bookstore haul. Uh, these days, I've been acutely aware of really missing going to bookstores and shopping, browsing around, haunting bookstores. I especially miss my beloved library sales, and it, I've noted how much, I, I don't know, it makes me sad. And I'm also acutely aware that it's very much a first world problem of not being able to go shopping for books and not being able to go browsing and not being able to go visit my um, independent used bookstores and not be able to, su to support my local library book sales. And I'm, I've also become much more aware of my independent bookstores, which are struggling to stay open and struggling to stay in business by either um, instituting curbside pickup or shipping books to customers. Um, typically, I buy my books from a lot of different sources, and I don't have a very robust budget to buy a lot of books. I look for the best prices I can find on the books that I want to buy, and so I've got a lot of different sources. But lately, I my shopping has gone way down because, number one, I don't need many more new books. I've got plenty of books to read. And I, I'm trying to conserve funds because, you know, who knows what our economy is going to do and who knows if I get to keep my job for a long time or who, who knows? It's Everything is so uncertain. So I've become much more aware of wanting to help my independent bookstores, my local stores. And so I've, I've ordered five books in the last couple of weeks from an independent bookstore that I love. And it's not necessarily close to me, but it's in a town in New Hampshire, which my husband and I love to go to. We've we've had weekends there. We actually spent our honeymoon there 22 years ago. And we we go for day trips quite often. We've spent our anniversaries there. I don't know if I just said that. But our daughter loves to go there. There's a lot of things to do with kids. And it's in a beautiful part of the state. It's in the mountains. And the town is North Conway, New Hampshire. And the bookstore that I love there, that we actually all love to visit there, is called White Birch Books. It is, it's been there for a very long time, and I'll try to do a little bit of research on its history. But I'm putting a picture in, and uh, it's right on, I don't know, who, anybody who lives in my area of New Hampshire in the U.S., if you're familiar with North Conway, you know exactly where this store is. It's right on the main strip, and... Um, I'll try to get a few shots of their website and their contact information. They are closed in a physical way. However, they're still doing business and their website is hooked up with bookshop.org. Bookshop.org is a new startup that you can buy books on the website and they will give a portion of the proceeds to independent bookstores and you can determine and designate which bookstore is either local to you or the one that you want to get the most support. So that's what I did. And at first I went on bookshop.org and attempted to browse for books and place an order. At first it was really difficult to do that and I'm not sure why. The website was not behaving. So I could, I could look up books, but it was a really difficult platform to use. And I kept trying and I couldn't I, I loaded up a cart with, with three books to start, and then I couldn't, there was no purchase button. And so I was, I was really frustrated because I really wanted to use the service. What I ended up doing is I called the bookstore directly, White Birch Books, and I spoke to a wonderful woman who, uh, I explained what I was trying to do, and she was so thoughtful and kind, and we had a great conversation. I told her the books that I wanted and they were all in stock. And so we, I did a purchase with her over the phone and they shipped the books directly from the store. And I think I got them about a week later. And then I tried to go on bookshop.org again, uh, maybe a week or two after that. And I, I couldn't, again, I couldn't do it. So I sent 
White Birch Books a Facebook message and they were so responsive and they said to me that a lot of people have said that it's the internet platform you're using. So if you try a different one, it might work. And she said there should be a cart icon where you can purchase your books directly on the website. So I started off using Internet Explorer because that's what my work laptop is set up for. And that's the my first impulse was to use that. It just did not work well. So I, I tried uh, Microsoft Edge. And it gave me the same look of the website as Internet Explorer did. And I let her know that. I kept, we were corresponding in Facebook. And she said, um, she said, I know that other people have tried either Firefox or Google. And um, let me know, you know, call us if you still are finding that you can't do your transaction. And we'll do this over the phone. So I ended up going into Google Chrome. And lo and behold, it was right there. Everything was there. I could browse very easily. I could pick White Birch Books as the local bookstore I wanted to support. And I had the ever-loving cart that I could load my books into. So I ended up buying two additional books from um, bookshop.org and supporting White, Bir White Birch Books in North Conway, New Hampshire. So I'm just going to go through those right now and show you what I purchased. The first one is The Cost of Living from Deborah Levy, and I read Hot Milk last last year. It's starting to wiggle. The tripod is starting to wiggle. Um, I read Hot Milk. I, I think it's the big, the big, earlier in this year I read that. But The Cost of Living is a is a short memoir. It's a pretty short book. Short memoir, memoir from Deborah Levy. And it says very quickly on the back, um, what does it cost a woman to unsettle old boundaries and collapse the social hierarchies that make her a minor character in a world not arranged to her advantage? This vibrant memoir, Portrait of Contemporary Womanhood in Flux, is an urgent quest to find an unwritten major female character who can exist more easily in the world. Levy considers what it means to live with meaning, value, and pleasure, to seize the ultimate freedom of writing our own lives and reflects on the work of such artists and thinkers as Simone de Beauvoir, James Baldwin, Elena Ferrante, Marguerite Duras, David Lynch, and Emily Dickinson. I really loved her writing in Hot Milk, which is a novel, and heard some, I heard some mixed reviews about this book, um, but it, it intrigued me, so I picked it up and look forward to reading that. The next one is The Argonauts from Maggie Nelson, and this is a Again, it's a, a, another one. It's a short memoir. And Maggie Nelson tells about her life and her relationship with... Um, it doesn't say on the back. It, it's, it's an exploration of gender and love um, and pregnancy and parenthood. She talks about her relationship with her partner who is gender fluid. She talks about uh, her pregnancy and, and having a child. Um, her views on motherhood, and really quickly in the back, Maggie Nelson's The Argonauts is a genre-bending memoir, a work of auto-theory offering fresh, fierce, and timely thinking about desire, identity, and the limitations and possibilities of love and language. It binds an account of Nelson's relationship with her fluidly gendered partner in a journey to and through a pregnancy to a rigorous exploration of sexuality, gender, and family. That one sounds fascinating to me. And I really enjoy reading um, even novels, novels or memoirs or books in general from from a person's perspective of Maggie Nelson's, you know, talking about a non-traditional view of family and parenthood. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. The next one I finished, and so I'm not going to give a lot of review conversation because I'm going to do that in my month of April wrap up at the end of the month. But this is A Loving Faithful Animal by Josephine Rowe. Josephine Rowe is an Australian author and this is um, this will, will apply to Aussie April. But very quickly it depicts the story of a family, um, father and mother and two daughters and it, it goes back and forth in time but the entire book only takes place over a day or two. Um, it's it, There are flashbacks of how the parents met, what their relationship was like, and it gives the perspectives of the two daughters until they become adults. And again, I'm not going to say too much. I really did like that one, though. 
And the, the next two books I ordered um, a, a week or so after my first order, they haven't arrived yet. So I'm going to put some pictures over here in the corner. The first one is a book that was on the Women's Prize long list. It did not make it to the short list, but I, it still intrigued me and I, I bought a copy. It is How We Disappeared by Jin Jin, Li, Jing Jing Li. How We Disappeared is a dual timeline story. It starts in 1942 in Singapore when the Japanese troops took over and rifled the city. Um, I'm reading my Kindle down below. The main character is 17-year-old Wang Di, and she is forced by the Japanese troops into becoming a comfort woman, and she's forced into sexual slavery and prostitution. She, it, it discusses her experiences, um, her life, and it says, after 60 years of silence, what she saw and experienced still haunts her. And then the next timeline takes place in 2000. 12-year-old um, Kevin is sitting beside his ailing grandmother when he overhears a mumbled confession. He sets out to discover the truth whatever, wherever it might lead, setting in motion a chain of events he never could have foreseen. And it sounds very interesting to me. I heard very good reviews from other booktubers and um, also some harrowing reviews, so I'm sure there's going to be some triggers in that book, in that novel, so... Um, hopefully you note that if you're interested in that one. And then the last book I got that I haven't received yet is everybody, I don't have to describe much of this book, but it's Chanel Miller's Know My Name. Back in 2015, uh, Brock Turner was arrested for rape and sexual assault of Chanel Miller, who at the time was unknown. And her name was depicted as Emily Doe in the news and the media. Um, she was unconscious when he attacked her and sexually assaulted her. Uh, she, after, after he was arrested, um, she wrote a letter, a victim statement, and which was picked up and posted in the media and viewed millions and millions of times. I remember reading it and I remember when the story actually happened and how enraging it was and I remember reading her victim statement in tears because the things that she talked about she was unconscious through the whole ordeal and didn't remember any of it and her story picked up when she was awoken in the emergency room she was brought in unconscious and she she only remembers parts of those events from that point um for any of us who remember when this actually took place Brock Turner was um, arrested and tried, and he received a six-month sentence with, um, I don't remember how many years, three years of probation, and he was ordered to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. He, was only, he only served three months in jail, and his father um, proposed that he should receive a lighter sentence because he should not be penalized for only 20 minutes of action. Brock Turner was a um, champion swimmer who was supposed to go on to be an Olympic swimmer with Team USA. I think that's what it's called. Now, the thing that's enraging to me is the 20 minutes of action phrase. This happened in 2015, and Chanel Miller's book came out last year in 2019. Um, right now, we're at five years of repercussion and five years of a trauma that she still deals with and she has lived through. The book is her take back of the events and her power to tell her own story and to to go through what she remembered, but then what she had to research into and the things that she had to cope with and get support through in order to process what happened to her and in order to process what didn't happen to Turner after the events. Um, it, to me, it, it, it sounded then and it continues to sound like the story of a wealthy entitled college student at Stanford University who truly believed he didn't do very much wrong. Even his family supported him and backed him up. And the accounts are harrowing, but what is, what, I don't even have the right word for it. What is ominous to me 
is the fact that he felt entitled to perpetrate this type of violence on an unconscious woman and justified it later. His father justified it with the phrase 20 minutes of action. The judge justified it by giving him six months because of his youth and his lack of criminal history and his showing of remorse. Chanel Miller is now dealing with five years of repercussions. And from what I read, Turner is now, um, has given up a, a career uh, in medicine. I think he was trying to go to medical school. He lives with his parents and he's working close to a minimum wage job. I hope that Chanel Miller receives everything she deserves from the publication of her book. And she goes forward knowing that her life has meaning and worth and the events that happened to her as, as maddening and as traumatizing as they were are going to move forward and create change. And I think they already have in the California criminal justice system. So I applaud her bravery to come forward publicly and announce who she is and announce her name. So I haven't received that one yet. And that's a book that very shortly after I receive it, I will probably sit down and read it. So that's that. Again, White Birch Books in North Conway, New Hampshire is the local bookstore local-ish bookstore to me that I supported by purchasing through bookshop.org and I'll leave a picture of that website as well. If you can, shop locally, uh, shop independently, shop online and shop independently. Now it's possible through bookshop.org. Call your local bookstore and if you reach a person, I am, I am sure they will gladly assist you in, in purchasing books over the phone and shipping them to you or making it curbside delivery if it's close enough to you. It might actually be curbside delivery for me if we took a sunny day on a Saturday and drove up to North Conway and went to Zeb's for candy. And uh, if they're still open, that's another thing is I'm not sure they would be. But North Conway is beautiful. It's in the mountains. It's when it's sunny, it's absolutely gorgeous. Plenty of places to walk and be outside. So I hope you all have places like that that you can go out and enjoy, especially in the sun. It's Today it's sunny-ish in New Hampshire, so we're going to try to get outside. Um, we also ordered dinner from a local restaurant to us that we're really looking forward to. Uh, New England Boiled Dinner, which is one of my favorites. So, yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully we can continue this way and we can continue to enjoy our time and have some tranquility in all the uncertainty and uh, move forward from here. I hope you're well. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, write a comment below if you have any opinions or comments on any of the books I mentioned, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.